Here we have a Lenovo B50 minus 70. This is the B50 series. So all of them look the same basically, just different components inside, such as some come with graphic cards, some come with touchscreen, some don't. So we're going to open up and explore the insides. Remember to put your laptop on something soft, so you don't damage it or scratch it when you move it around, and we're going to flip to the back. So now we're at the back, we need to remove our battery. We're going to remove the back cover. This gives you access to your hard drive, RAM and wireless card. There's two screws holding the back cover down. So now that we remove the screws, we pull this, slide it, and it comes off. You see there's a gap, slide upwards according to the screen, and then you lift it up and it comes off. So here's the hard drive, here's the wireless card, BIOS battery, RAM slot 1, and there's a second RAM slot. So you need to remove two screws to remove the hard drive. So after we remove the screw, we need to slide it, slide it to the right, and then there's this tab here. You can use it to lift the hard drive up or just use your own hand to lift it up. So here's the RAM slot. You push the two sides apart, then the RAM pops up. There's two RAM slot. So that's maximum 16 gigs of RAM with 8 gigs in each slot and it only uses DDR3L which means DDR3 low voltage. So here's the wireless card. We need to take out our cables and then there's one screw holding the wireless card down. And just lift it up and slide it out and it comes out. So now we're going to remove one screw to remove the DVD drive, which is here. After you remove the screw, just drag the DVD drive out and it comes out. So now we need to remove all the screws on the back. So I'm just going to point out to you where all the screws are now.
just to show you there are actually two different types of screw they might look the same so be careful So now that I've removed all the screws, we're going to flip open, <coughs> flip it around to open it to the keyboard because we need to remove the keyboard as there's screws under it. So with the keyboard, you need to pry it open to remove it. As you can see, I just pry it open with my hand. You can use a prying tool, but since one of my sides was sticking up, I just pull it in my hand and this is the keyboard cable, we need to remove it. This cable doesn't have backlighting, if you guys want to know. So we need to remove a few cables. This is the power button, this is the mouse pad. So these cables you just pull on it and it'll come off, there's no clips or anything. And there's also a few screws we have to remove as well. Please note, I already removed the screws in advance. So that's why you don't see me removing any of the screws. So we're going to need a prying tool to go around the edges. I'm just going to take the laptop off screen as it's easier for me to pry. Now I have finished prying it, you just lift it up and it should come off. Be careful, after removing stuff from the bottom, it tends to get heavy, uh, it tends to get lose weight and the LCD screen causes it to tip back, so be careful of that. This is why you see me moving the LCD screen now and then, as it's tilting. So here we have the speaker, there's two of them, the fan, that's the CPU and the GPU is under there. So we need to remove the motherboard, for that we need to remove that cable, this cable as well. And here, this is the daughter board connection, same with the other one, the first cable was also a daughter board connection. Is our LCD cable. So now we're going to have to remove a few screws, I'm just pointing them out now.
Now we remove the screws, we have to flip it open, uh, flip it over, apologize, to remove our cable from the opposite side. Here, this is our sound cable for our speakers. You also have to remove these two screws here. I forgot to remove. And there's also a screw on the fan that you have to remove as well. Now that I remove the screw on the fan, you just lift it up and it comes off. Remember there's a power cable underneath, so lift it up gently and you're going to have to remove your power cable. You can remove your power cable from the daughter board or your power cable from the motherboard, which direction you want. I removed it from the daughter board as I believe it's easier. So here's our motherboard. So, I'm just removing the power cable for the fan. So, here's the heating. There's six screws in total that we have to remove. You can remove the screws in any order. Next to the screw hole, there's actually numbers to show you how to screw it back in. You screw them in order. When you remove the heating, you also have to reapply thermal paste and clean the old. Uh, old film piece off. For those who don't know, the CPU and the graphic card in this for this laptop is soldered on so you can't change it so here we go here's our heating dust normally builds up around here so if you have dust here this is where you know where to clean out just to show you this is where the fins are and if you use your laptop for a while dust starts building up there so we need to clean off this thermal paste I'm just going to use a cloth you need to clean off the thermal paste on the motherboard as well and these black dots are RAM for your graphic card. You don't need any special alcohol solutions or liquids to clean it off. You just need a cloth or tissue and just rub it off. You don't have to be 100% clean, but it's good if you can. It's not a big deal if you don't. As you can see, the thermal paste comes off pretty easily. When you clean it, try not to clean it over your motherboard. I just clean it over the motherboard so you can see. And sometimes you clean it, pieces of thermal paste fall down onto your motherboard. So there's one screw here holding the fan down. I'm just going to screw the fan back in as I don't need to leave it lying around.
So I'm using Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. This costs around $10 per tube, $10 Australian. Don't be cheap on your thermal paste, it's really important. You probably only use it once in your life. So for each chip, we want to put a half of rice grain on it. So for the graph card, you put a half of rice grain size of thermal paste. And for the CPU, it has two. So you want to put half of rice grain on each. You don't want to spread it out, just put it in the center. And when you put, apply the heatsink back on, it will spread it out automatically. Just to show you. So just to show you the numbers on the heatsink, if you have it in front of me, you'll be able to see. So that's one, two, three, four, there's five, and six. So you try to realign it and don't push it down. Use the screws to push it down. I wasn't able to screw in my screws properly before, so I have to reverse the process to screw it in properly so it spreads out evenly. So just making sure it's more tight. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. This disassembly is relatively really easy. There is a slight confusion in the screws. The screws might look the same, but they're not. So make sure to look at it carefully and put them aside so you don't put the wrong screw in the wrong hole. The screws are not different in length but different in thickness. Thanks for watching.